Hi, welcome to this video on Z transforms. So what are Z transforms? You have read about discrete time Fourier transforms, which are simply uh, discrete Fourier transform of a sequence xn is xn e to the power minus j omega n summed over all n, right? The same thing can be written slightly differently. You see, now e to the minus j omega n can be written like this, and uh, I can generalize this to any complex number. e to the power j omega is a complex number with unit magnitude uh, and the uh, angle is from 0 to 2 pi. Basically it lies on a unit circle in the complex plane. But this can be generalized to any complex number in the complex plane, right? So that is called a z transform. More formally, x of z, now see e to the power j omega is replaced with a z x of z is given by xn z to the power minus n and you know both are same when z is exactly e to the power j omega for any omega between 0 to 2 pi let's say so this is the z transform okay. uh, if you look at the uh, complex plane this is how it looks like e to the power j omega is any point on the unit radius uh, circle and uh, but it could be anywhere so that's why r times e to the power j omega could be anywhere well, of course this omega is not same as this omega okay um, so how do you write it so z transform of xn a sequence xn is given by x of z and then uh, another way to write the same thing is x of n when you take a z transform it gives you x of z so z is a complex number e to the power j omega uh, but if, if it is e to the power j omega unit magnitude then it is x of z is dtft but if it is r times e to the power j omega where r is not 1 then it is in general z transform right and uh, this is but if you compare the two forms it is the dtft of xn r to the power minus n it's like multiplying the whole sequence with r to the power minus n so that you get uh, a new sequence and z transform is the ttft of this new sequence so this is the equivalence or uh, comparison between z transform and dtft now okay the need why do you need a z transform yes so, so recall that discrete time fourier transform converges only when xn is absolutely summable this means x of n uh, the mod uh, and summed over all n if this is a finite number less than infinity only in this condition the dtft converges and it has a closed form solution closed form expression uh, but what happens if dtft does not converge you have seen examples in this in the past let's say an exponentially raising sequence it does not converge the dtft does not converge so like it. many times dtft may not converge but multiplying it with r to the power minus n could make it converge remember just now we saw that z transform is r to the power minus n times the sequence and dtft of this whole thing that is the z transform okay so what i'm what we are saying is that dtft may not converge for xn but if i multiply xn with r to the power minus n then my thing could converge so if i have x n r to the power minus n this thing summed over all possible n this could be infinity less than infinity means it's a finite number okay so that takes us to the concept of region of convergence so region of convergence is the region in the z plane where x of z converges basically i want to find a value of r such that this thing converges so that when i take the ttft of this sequence then i get a closed form expression i get a valid ttft right so that is i know these things are little difficult in the beginning to understand but this will be very very clear with the help of an example so let's see an example this is a standard example so listen very carefully okay so this is my x of n 
it's uh, an exponential sequence. It is decreasing uh, with time. Uh, so x of n is a to the power n u n, right? So for this x of n, uh, what is my z transform? Uh, my uh, sorry, DTFT. So my DTFT is written like this. Uh, simply x x n e to the power minus z omega n summed over all n. Since n is varying between zero to infinity, means before that x is always zero. So my range is n equal to zero to infinity. And you know this is a GP. This is a sum of a geometric progression where the common ratio is a e to the power minus j omega, right? And the sum is given by the first term divided by one minus r, and r is a e to the power minus j omega, right? So this, th but this sum is valid only when the common ratio or uh, basically my this com common ratio. Common ratio here is a to the power minus j omega. And I want this common ratio should be less than one for this sum to be valid. Okay, so this means my a should be less than one mod of a. So, but what if my mod of a is greater than or equal to one? Then you know DTFT does not converge. That the series will not converge. This means x to the power j omega will not exist. So that is what DTFT does not exist. Now consider the z-transform. So what happens if I take a z-transform? Okay, so this is my x of n. Now x of z is simply a to the power n, z to the power minus n. And this is equal to 1 upon 1 minus common ratio if the common ratio mod is less than 1. Now z is not simply an exponential, z is, z is not simply e to the power j omega, z is uh, any point in the complex plane. So now, even if my mod of a is greater than or equal to one, I can choose a z such that a z inverse mod is less than one, right? So let z is r to the power j omega, then a r inverse should be less than one. Uh, then the sequence converges, or equality I can say if my r mod is greater than mod of a. And this is the region of convergence, right? So, which means, if I have my a some value, uh, let us say this is mod of a, then if r is somewhere outside, it's okay if you want to. If my r is greater than mod a, then this converges. Right? This is the imaginary part of z, and this is the real part of z. Okay, so for example, consider x of n is 2 to the power n u n. You know the DTFT, okay, the sequence looks something like this. It's an exponentially raising, rising sequence. You know it is not absolutely summable because 2 to the power n won't converge, the sum over all n won't converge. So, but if I take the z transform, then this will converge if 2z, to the power, 2 z inverse mod is less than 1. And let us take r inverse to be 0 0.4 so that 2 times 0 0.4 is 0 0.8, uh, which is less than 1. So then that will converge. Uh, so this is this means r is 2.5. So for r equal to 2.5, this thing converges. Uh, so let us draw it. So if my x of n is something like this, uh, sorry, uh, basically 2 r inverse, uh, which means my x of n into r to the power minus n, right? So here x of n is here, r is equal to 2.5. So this thing converges now. Uh, another thing which I wanted to show is, okay, in this case, my, this is my a, which is equal to 2, and I want my r to be somewhere here, which is greater than 2. And then this converges. Basically, I can take any value of r. All these values of r are valid. So, so that my r e to the power j omega 
could be anywhere in this entire space. Right? Anywhere. But inside the circle is not allowed. Right? That's what this condition means. That my R, 2R inverse should be less than 1 means R should be greater than 2. Okay. Another example. Let's see another example now. So let us consider this form of Xn. It's minus e to the power n u of minus n minus 1. How does it look like? It is basically a negative sequence, an anti-causal sequence. You know, what is an anti-causal? It means that uh, at, at before n equal to 0, it is non-zero. Uh, and if after n equal to 0, it is 0. So it's anti-causal sequence. Anyways, just the terminology. Um, so now my x of e to the power g omega, my dtft will look something like this. Summation n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity, uh, a n u n minus u minus n minus one e to the power minus g omega n. But you know my u is zero for for what values? When n is zero, then u of minus one is zero. When n is one, um, n is minus one, then it is plus one minus one, so it is zero. Which means my my n should be less than or equal to minus one for this to be. Uh, one, right? So that is what I have put n equal to minus infinity to minus one a n e to the power minus g omega n. And what is this sequence? This is basically here r, r is as a common ratio. Uh, let's say let make it capital R so that you don't confuse it with the r of uh, um, r of the z transform. Okay, so a n e to the power minus g omega n uh, that is the so this sum does not converge because uh, okay so this so basically this sum is it converges only if uh, my common ratio which is a e to the minus g omega whole inverse is less than one right so let's capital R let's say this means my mod of a should be greater than one but what if mod of A is less than or equal to 1? Then the DTFT does not exist. Right? Now consider the Z transform. So, by the way, in the previous example which we saw, uh, here my uh, A should be greater than 1 and here my A is not greater than 1. That is why it is not converging. Okay, let's see, uh, xn is minus a to the power n, u of minus n minus 1. Now, consider the z transform. What, what happens with the z transform? So, this thing is equal to 1 upon 1 minus az inverse, only if az inverse is greater than 1, the mod is greater than 1. Right? So, what does that mean? I can choose a z such that az inverse mod is greater than 1. Let us say z is r to the power g omega, then I have to basically choose my R which is less than mod of A. So this is the region of convergence, right? That if I have my if I have my my mod of A, then my R should be somewhere here, less than mod of A. It cannot be outside. So basically what does it mean that uh, r to the power g omega can be anywhere here. But it cannot be outside of this circle. This circle is the region of convergence. Basically if r is in this circle, then this series will converge and x of z will have this form. Okay. Now let's, cons let's compare examples 1 and 2. In the example 1 we saw xn is a n u to the power n and the xz was 1 upon 1 minus a z inverse. Here we saw xn is something different sequence altogether, a n u minus n minus 1 negative. And x of z was surprisingly same value. Both have got same values even if x of n is different. Then what is different? The different is the region of convergence. The region of convergence here is r greater than or equal to a, but here it is r less than or, uh, less than a. So there is r greater than a, here it is r less than a. Okay, this is the right-sided right -sided exponential. As you can see, it's a right-sided exponential. And this one is a 
left sided exponential right and uh, now consider r th this this converges only when r is greater than a and this converges only when r less than a if you plot the region of convergence it is like this even if they have same x of z but depending on where you choose your r you will have a different sequence uh, represented by that x of z right the orange hashes represent this sequence means if your r is in this region then uh, uh, then this x of n will converge and this is the x of z for this x of n but if r is in this inside the circle then this x of z represents this sequence not the other one right so what do we learn about z transform now that z transform uh, must be accompanied by a region of convergence a closed form z transform closed form means when the summation has been done and this, the final sum uh, one expression uh, has a closed form uh, expression then that expression must be accompanied by the uh, by an roc region of convergence right and rocs are generally uh, regions either outside a circle or inside a circle or within a ring so basically these are circular regions uh, either outside a circle or inside a circle or within a ring means It could be either this or this within the ring or inside the circle. So there are some common Z transform pairs mentioned in the book Oppenheim, the textbook, in chapter two, table one. Chapter two is all about Z transforms, I think, and uh, these are the popular, some common pairs which you can derive very easily. I know you, uh, this is if you have done DTFT and BFT, then these things are just uh, cakewalk for you. Uh, so references, sorry, it's chapter three, not chapter two. This is chapter three. So Oppenheim 3.1 uh, is a reference for this discussion. Thank you very much.